Hi, Tom Andres here, and I want to show you a really cool project. And uh, I take a lot of questions from time to time about how to use multiple tools to make parts. And uh, with this particular part, it's really two completely different tool paths that we're going to use. Uh, this first tool path inside of here is a pocket tool path, and then we're going to use uh, a tool bit to cut the part out. And so it looks like this. So this is one that we just cut out on the CNC carving machine. And so what I want to do today is just show you uh, how to use multiple tools uh, to complete this project. The first thing that we're going to do is to measure the actual thickness of this board. And you can see that it comes out right at 1.48, maybe 1.49. And so that's a very important number. Uh, that we're going to then enter into the computer. Okay, so what you can see then are the vectors for uh, this particular cutout. And so the first thing that I want to do is to verify my job size and especially my thickness. So in this case, I'm going to type in 1.48 for the actual thickness. We just measured that with the micrometer and it is 9 by 12 and I'm going to click OK. And so the next thing then uh, that we're going to do in here is to select the vectors that we're going to carve uh, out with the round nose tool. And so uh, what I'm going to do then is to pick up that particular tool and uh, we're going to create not the profile but the pocket tool. And so for this particular carve, we're going to carve it 1.25 inches deep and uh, I already have that set and we're going to use a 0.5 inch ball nose and I'm going to click calculate and so you can see what that carve looks like and so we'll go ahead and preview that and it'll take uh, multiple passes uh, to to get that right And I'll go ahead and, and close that. And then I'll just use the material color. It's a little bit easier to see. So uh, then I'll go ahead and close that. But what I want to do is to show you just a little bit about uh, this particular pocket tool path. Because one of the things that you can do in, in edit mode is you can, you can change the pass depth. And usually the pass depth uh, on a cut like this, in my experience, 0.2 is a little bit faster than than an eighth of an inch, 0.125. And the step over, usually you can do maybe, uh, you can go up to 0.09. And that's, that's how much the tool overlaps on the next cut. And um, so we can go ahead and leave the spindle speed here. And the feed rate is 100 inches per minute. And the plunge rate is 30 inches per minute. And that, that's something that you just kind of have to experiment with. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'll go ahead and make a calculation. And I'll reset the preview and preview that again. And you can see that it's requiring a lot less time to make this final cutout uh, than it did previously. And so now then we're already done. Okay, so uh, at this point then I'll go ahead and save this particular one and make sure, you know, you're, if you're using the shark, you've got to pick whatever the machine is that you have. And so my machine is the CNC uh, shark um, using the inch driver. And so basically these are all called post processors. So whatever CNC machine you have, you're going to go ahead and convert uh, the code that is generated on vCarve Pro into the language that your particular machine uses. And so again, I'll go ahead and select this one and I'll save it. And of course your save location will be different. I'm going to go ahead and place this into a scrap folder. And I'm going to call this uh, the Bear Paw uh, Cut 1. And I'm going to rename this bear paw cut one and just leave it like that and I'm going to hit save okay then we're going to have to move to our second cut now 
The second tool that we're going to use is simply going to cut out using um, the pattern cutting tool. And so we've I've selected this particular pattern and we'll go ahead and create a profile tool path, which is what you use for a pattern cut. And so I'm going to use an end mill and the cut depth, if we want to cut it exactly uh, to the thickness of the wood, which is why I measure at 1.48, that should be uh, exact. And so this is right with the, the tool. I do want to cut on the outside of it. And I do want to add tabs. I don't want this to get loose. And so I have added tabs of uh, 0.5 and thickness of 0.125 or an eighth of an inch. And um, so that should be okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit calculate. And so what you can see when I cut this then is that it goes through and then actually cuts it out. And so you can see the tabs that are left on the final cut. So at this point, what I will do is go ahead and save this. And I will do cut two. And save. So we'll use a cut one and a cut two. So um, the next thing you'll see is uh, me over at the CNC Shark with the uh, piece chucked up and with the half inch ball nose installed and ready to go. Okay, at this point we're over at the CNC Shark control computer and I'm going to go ahead and load G-code and G-code stands for generic code and so the first cut that we want to make is this one, this file. So I'll go ahead and open this file and so what it's doing is it's loading all the XYZ uh, coordinate data that it will sequence through as it makes that cut. And so now it's completely loaded and something that's very very important is that as you look right here in the XYZ uh, coordinate location, that everything must be 000. One way, if it's not 000, to fix that is simply just to press XYZ0. And so, as you've seen before in my videos, I always um, place the XYZ000 location in the center of the board. And so at this point, I'm going to move the, compute, the uh, camera and I'm going to hit run file. So the next time it comes on, you'll be looking at the actual part. Okay, so now we're ready to go ahead and cut the profile out of this particular part. And the tricky part is to re-zero the tool because we've got to change tools. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, round over bit or the round bit and we're going to pull that ball nose out of there. And I'm going to replace that with the bit that we're going to use to cut this profile. Now, the, if, if in this part, you were able to touch the surface, um, that would make things a lot easier. And so I want to tell you a little trick or show you a little trick. One thing that you can do is you can put this something that's flat uh, in position and, um, and measure that particular part. So the, what we're going to do right now, what, when it pulls up out of the cutting uh, zone, it parks the bit 0.8 inches above the workpiece and so what I've got to do then is to go ahead and I'll, I'll drop this ball bit out 
and I will install the upcut spiral bit and what I'm going to do then is I'm going to bring this manually down until it touches and you can see right there is where it's touching and so what I need to do when I go back to the machine is uh, this particular bit right now in X and Y is exactly at zero zero and in the Z axis up and down what I need to do is I need to drop that bit down 0.21 inches and then it will be at zero 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 okay so the first thing we need to do is to go and pick up our next file which is the bear paw cut 2 and I'll click open and it loads the file and it's ready okay so what you can see is that right here it is parked at 0.8 inches above and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit XYZ 0 and now it's at zero. Okay, so what you can see is that the XYZ zero, zero, zero is set. And so I've, I've zeroed that out, but the part is actually 0.21 inches higher. The cutting tool is 0.21 inches higher than it needs to be. So what I'm going to do is to drop that down, minus 0.21, minus 0.21, and I have to go up and that should be about perfect it doesn't if I if I um, go down to step uh, over here I can I can actually go to point two and I'll go one out uh, two eleven I guess so it goes two thousand seven inch but anyway at this point then now the bit is actually zeroed out and so I can and I can actually go to XYZ zero and now my bit is actually in position where it needs to be to make that cut. So I'll go ahead and move the camera now at this point and you can watch the cut. 